Hey everyone, welcome, welcome to this episode of I Got This. Today we have a great guest and she joins us from, she's from the UK, but you're joining us from Colombia, right? Yes, that's correct. Right, awesome. So I'd like to introduce you to Maria Bonita Welsh. She's a holistic health and EFT practitioner. But what I like to always talk about is really how you got there. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of us, we, we, didn't, we didn't just start saying, I think I'll be a holistic health and EFT practitioner. A lot of times there was a journey that we took, um, a part of our journey, our path that kind of took us there. And I'd like to hear a little bit more. First of all, tell me where you are in your life right now. And then a little bit about how you got here. Fantastic. Well, yeah, thank you for having me here today. I'm excited to be talking to you. Um, Currently, I'm living in Colombia. I've been here for the last seven years. Um, And I left my job during, well, this year, actually, I left my teaching job completely uninspired. Um, I think with the pandemic as well, it it was like a a kick in the butt for me, basically. Like, (laughs) when are you going to start living for yourself? (laughs) When are you going to start, you know, like aligning with your soul and stop making excuses and thinking that, you know, you have to do these external things because of money, because of people, because of whatever, because the job that I had before um, uh, came with an apartment, it came with a flight and it felt very like constricting, like I had to do these things. Um, And this year I was like, that's it, I'm done. I'm done living things in the same way. Um, I'm turning 30 next year, which was another kind of kick in the butt. Like I have to, I was like, I have to make a change. I don't care how it happens. Um, And I've been doing, I've been working on my business throughout all of COVID. um, And now I'm working independently. I recently moved to the countryside because I was living in the city, which is also, was uh, especially the city that I was living in was a big energy drainer and the countryside, you know, being around nature, it really shifts your energy big time, which some of us kind of, we forget about that. So now I'm just, yeah, I'm working for myself. I'm um, mostly working one-on-one with clients. Most of the clients that, that I work with are women that struggle with food issues, with um, with sugar, with binge eating, which is the things that I used to struggle with. Um, and yeah, and I'm happily married here now in Colombia in the, in the mountains. I, you might be able to see through the window. <laughs> I can. I can. So I was going to say, like, I can actually see right through your window right now. Those of the people who are listening to this podcast can't see anything, but I can <laughs> see out your window. It's lovely. So I've got a couple, of, a couple of things that you said there. So first of all, isn't it interesting that you had a job that came with all of these things, including mm-hmm. a flat and all of this stuff, which most people would go, wow. Yeah. To that. Like, that's amazing. So, but you found it constricting. Yeah, I think it was when I first got the job, I was there for four years. I thought it was amazing. I was like, this is what I wanted because it was teaching something that was aligned with my degree. I was teaching social studies and and it felt really aligned. But during that process, the first year and a half that I started teaching, that was when I sort of had this spiritual awakening and I became plant-based. And these two things together, not for everyone, they're connected, but for me personally, they were was like I was looking at the materials and the things that I was teaching students and suddenly I felt like instead of giving them the tools to thrive in life I was doing the opposite I was like cutting off their wings and it it was started to kind of eat me a little you know it wasn't something that I was consciously aware of at the beginning but slowly the more I started reading the more I started studying um different you know like looking at different authors different spiritual kind of leaders and stuff I was like, what am I doing? Am I really helping these kids, teaching them about World War II, right? And there's no, there's no, you know, there's other people that I think could have um, done the same job and found their way within it. But for me, it was the opposite. And so the job was so good. I was, um, for, for the country that I'm in, I was paid double what the other teachers were paid because I was from a different country. I got, like I was saying, I got an apartment, I got a flight, I got all these benefits and stuff. Um, and my husband was like, you're so lucky. You have like the best job. Like, you know, it's amazing. And I was like, I, it, I am lucky. It is an amazing job. But it started to feel like I had to do it. Like I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, um, the times, the, the the days were really long. Um, and it started to be like, you know, I couldn't travel whenever I wanted to. I couldn't teach the things that I wanted to. I couldn't share the messages that I wanted to. And then when the pandemic started, 
um, the messaging was very fear-based. And then that, that really started to eat away at me as well. Like I felt like I was teaching the kids to fear everything, to fear going outside, you know, to believe everything the news was saying. And it, it just became, you know, like even stronger. But I'm grateful because, like I said, it was the push that I needed. It was that push to really kind of get out of it. You know what? I'm really, I have to give you a kudos, you know, a, a, a cheer for you to say that, you know, a lot of people in your situation would have just sucked it up. Mm-hmm. You know, they would have said, look at all the stuff I'm getting, you know, it doesn't matter. I've got a good life. You know, I've got a job I have, you know, I'm getting paid double. I have this flat. I have like, you know, I'm very fortunate in all the things I have. I'll just suck it up. Mm-hmm. You know, this feeling that I have inside. So it's very interesting to me. I always find it very interesting when people say, you know what, it doesn't matter what's on the outside, I have to listen to myself on the inside and step into what I what I'm beginning to call the zone of genius. So those of mm-hmm. you who are um, familiar with Gay Hendricks, so the the zone of genius. So were you teaching this job in Columbia? Yeah, so yeah, I was teaching, okay. I was teaching in so English. That's how you but... ended up... Okay, so that's how you ended up in Columbia from the UK. Okay, I just was just trying to tra- track your travels there. Okay. So how did you move like out of, so you're teaching social studies, English, social studies, these types of topics, and now you're a holistic health and EFT practitioner. Mm-hmm. How do you get from A to B? So originally, um, going back a few years, like when I was a teenager, when I was at university, I was someone that was struggling with like emotional eating, binge eating. I described myself as someone who was completely addicted to sugar. Um, you know, a, a lot of anxiety, panic attacks. I was, um, quite overweight as well. I had like weight issues. Um, I was taking like, I was like recreational drug user. Like I was taking drugs most weekends and stuff. And, um, I, I had no idea at that time between the, you know, the mind body connection, like now, now I'm laughing, but at the time I had no idea. I didn't think that my lifestyle affected my mental health in the slightest. I thought the two things were completely separate. Um, and I got to a point where, um, my dad got really sick and, um, he ended up getting lung cancer. At that time, I had no idea how serious lung cancer was, but I knew he was really sick. And I started, um, like, like every time I went to university, I started getting like a panic attack and I'd have to run to the toilet. And I was like, something, something is wrong here. Like, I know something is wrong. I don't know what it is. So I took a little bit of time out. Um, and, um, I started kind of like a few different people told me like, you know, why don't you do a bit of exercise that might make you feel better? And the first time someone said that to me, I kind of, it kind of pissed me off and I didn't believe them. <laughs> but I was like, you know, I was getting to this point where I was like, I'm desperate. I'm, I'm willing to try anything. So I started just sort of changing my diet a little bit, doing a little bit of exercise, just doing things differently. And I realized that, wow, okay, this can make me feel better. This can shift my energy. This can, you know, make me see things differently. Um, I can get out of my own head. So I started practicing yoga, meditation, and, you know, it continued and it was very much like a personal journey at first. It was all just, you know, me trying to figure it out. And then um, when I was here in Colombia and I knew I started to feel like I have to do things differently. I have to teach something else. I started to realize that all of the struggles that I'd had, other people were still having them. And at the time, you know, I was so in myself that I thought I was the only person that (laughs) I thought I was the only person that struggled with food. I was the only person that, you know, struggled with their weight. Like, you know, everyone, not everyone, but a large proportion of people have struggled with these same things. So I started sharing that and I started teaching that and then becoming certified. And that was how I got into um, holistic health specifically, because I realized that the only way forward is a holistic perspective. Like you can't separate things and think that, you know, my food is not going to affect my mental health and what I'm reading or what I'm watching on the TV has no impact. You know, it's all connected. And, um, and then I had, um, a, well, what, what, what I consider a traumatic experience, which was I had an abortion and it was a really painful abortion. It was like, um, it was done here in Latin America. It was, you know, really complicated on many different levels. And it left me with PTSD for about a year. I had PTSD and I didn't know like how to shift it. And I wasn't really sure what was going on. 
and I stumbled upon EFT because I thought it would be an interesting tool like to use my clients like just to relax from stress and I thought maybe it can help with some eating issues so I was working with an EFT practitioner I was like please like I have this problem can you do can you help me with it somehow and I was blown away how in just one session with an EFT practitioner all of the symptoms so the nausea like I would walk I used to get that thing that hospital smell would give me like nausea and I'd feel sick or I would get um like sudden like moments of panic or I would get dizzy or I'd get flashbacks all of that kind of stuff and so in one session all of that disappeared and that for me was life-changing because how can you know if you were brought up being told that the only option you have is to go and see a psychologist or a therapist like a traditional therapist and that is your only option and it might and it doesn't work for everyone like it works for some people working with EFT I was like wow this is a tool that can really change lives and so since that day I've been dedicated to studying it I keep studying it I study you know TFT and variants of it because I think that there is something there because um EFT emotional freedom technique for anyone that's maybe not fully aware is based um, on Chinese medicine. So the knowledge that it's based on is really ancient and it's been around forever. It's just kind of a modern take on it. Um, and I think it's something that m- maybe doesn't work for everyone, but that if people were aware of it and were able to integrate it in their lives, I think it would have a massive, massive shift for a lot of people. Right. Interesting that you had a profound, like one session. I just want people to know not everything happens in mm-hmm. one session. But when you're ready, like when you're ready, it can. And, you know, yours happened with EFT. Mine happened with hypnosis. Um, when you're ready to like move forward and s- step away from something, it's it's really interesting the profound effect something can have on you. And EFT tapping is pretty powerful. I've not studied it yet, but it's definitely on my list of, you know, things I want to learn about. I've used it a couple of times. It is really great. And for those of you that don't know, you're basically, um, and I'm just going to really take it to the basics here. You're working with your meridians, which is, and, and your acupuncture points. So the meridians are like, people don't know, a lot of people don't know what that means. So the meridians, I want you to think about your meridians, like the veins in your body. So in your body, the veins move your blood, right? Meridians, it's like invisible veins that move your energy around your body. So sometimes they can get blocked, just like you can get a blockage in your artery, just like you can get a blockage in your vein, you can get a buildup of crap. This is the same kind of thing that can happen inside your meridians. And it can cause you discomfort and pain and all kinds of things in your body where you wouldn't be thinking that it's an energy-based issue, that it could be an energy-based issue. And just by unblocking those meridians, you could actually virtually solve your issue. So it's definitely something to look into and not not put aside as woo-woo. It's not a woo-woo thing. And I think now in 2021, as we reach this place of a quantum leap, and I call it a quantum leap Um, I actually got that verbiage from Richard Rudd, who writes the Gene Keys. And the quantum leap is we are going through a huge evolution in our in ourselves and humanity, the planet, everything. We're going through a big change, this shift. Right. So you, you may have heard people talking about the shift. A lot of spiritual, holistic people talk about the shift. And we're in it like we're in the throes of it now. And, you know, what evolution means is, you know, we, we evolved from amoebas to what we are now, right? So, you know, in, in those times, there was huge shifts. So right now we're going through a huge one. And it'll last another couple of years before it finishes or before it's like we can see, sense a change, but there we are. And, you know, things like EFT, things like um, a lot of different kinds of sort of ancient traditional teachings and methodologies are things that you really want to look into because I think a lot of people have issue with things that they can't see or that they're that they don't have the knowledge in and that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist and it doesn't mean that it won't work powerfully for you one thing you said earlier Maria and I really want to focus on that is that you use the word holistic. I, I'm a, I do holistic. I'm a holistic uh, life strategist as well. So 
I don't think people understand what holistic means. So they think holistic is spiritual. You know, it's all about, you know, energy and woo woo. Holistic is not that holistic. That's part of it. But holistic is not that holistic means that you're dealing with your whole being, right? So you're dealing with your mind, your subconscious, your nervous system, you're dealing with your body, you're dealing with your energy, you're dealing with your belief system, you're dealing with everything because anything and everything that happens to you happens on every single layer of your being. And if you don't heal yourself or work with yourself on every single layer of your being, then anything you're doing, and I hate to say it, for people who are listening, who are talk therapists, listen, (laughs) you're doing a great job. (laughs) But, you know, if sometimes teaching people coping techniques isn't really what's going to help them in the long run, because if it happens again or it happens stronger, then they'll end up back there again. What we want to do is help to eliminate the issue entirely. And that can only be done with dealing with the, with the various issues of who you are. If you're only working on one layer of yourself, then it's basically like putting a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. It, at some point, it will start bleeding again. Right. So, so thank you for saying that word and being and doing the work that you're doing, because it's very important for people to work on different layers. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cause I remember, you know, a lot of times we think something like if I have, um, if I'm not feeling good mentally, I go and speak to a therapist and that's it. But you've got to realize that, you know, maybe the food that you're eating might be affecting you. Maybe the people yeah. you're around might not be, might be affecting you. And something that a lot of people don't realize, and that I work with my clients a lot, is that when you have issues with food, specifically, because that's, that's what I'm more familiar with, um, often it's because you're not living for yourself. You're, you have a job that you find really boring. So you get to the end of the day and then you think, you know what, I'm going to eat a bar of chocolate because that's your fun because you've got nothing left to really light up your day and give you kind of any satisfaction. And so there's these things that people don't talk about. We, we compartmentalize everything into little sections and we, we don't realize that we're actually shooting ourselves in the foot because we're not really <laughs> helping ourselves heal like truly. Absolutely. You're right. You're right. And I, and I think that people also, they're afraid, you know, I mean, we, we, we stay to our past, you know, we, like I, mm-hmm. I do work with, with this too, with people and they're always like, well, this happened to me and that happened to me. Yeah. It's part of your story. It happened. Yeah. You know, you can't belittle it. It happened. However, the past isn't who you are now. Right. And so when we keep living back there, we're missing what's happening here right now Mm -hmm. and the changes and all the growth that you've done because of your past, right? You know, I always tell people opportunities are nice. They're fluffy. They're nice. But what do they teach you? Nothing. (laughs) They show up. They're like, Oh, that's so great. You know, I can do this thing. And it's great. However, obstacles are the biggest teachers. Those are the biggest opportunities for you because when you reach an obstacle and you're able to get through it, whether it's a horrific obstacle or a blockage, whether it's just like, oh my God, I've got to deal with the government with something for the next couple of days or whatever it is that shows up. I got to move from my house, you know, COVID, whatever it is, you are learning something. Your resources are are growing and not your negative stuff, your positive stuff. You know, I have this client and she's gone through a horrific past and she's very focused on that. And, you know, last night I was talking to her and I said, you know, that you are so strong because most people would not be able to do what you did, would not have been able to survive what you, what you lived right? And that takes strength, right? That takes strength. So even though when people tell you that you're strong and she says, no, I feel like I'm weak. It's like, no, 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 no. (laughs) You're actually very strong because you survived it and you're ingenious because you survived it and courageous because you walked away from it, right? So courage you know, people think that they have, you know, courage means no fear. No, courage means you make the right choice for yourself despite your fear. 
And what ends up happening in the past is we stay in those, we, we restrict ourselves. We feel stuck there because we know it. It's familiar. We know what to expect from it. You know, like even if it's crappy, we still know what it is, right? There's no surprises there. And walking into, you know, busting through your upper limits and going beyond that, it's an unknown, right? We don't know what that, what that means. And the perfect example of that is I remember, you know, I had my profound moment with hypnosis and my, the, the person that I was working with, Dax, I love her to pieces. She kept saying, actually, you got to let go of your past. You got to let go of your past. And I was like, nope, I was white knuckling it. Like I was holding on for dear life. And she said, why? And I said, you're telling me to let go of my pain, but that's all I am. So if you ask me to let go of it, I don't know what's going to be left of me. Right. I think I'm going to be just this puddle of goop on the ground. Like I just actually don't even know what I'll be. And I think that that's it. We've been something for so long. We don't know what we would be without it. And it's that fear. And, you know, I use the word white knuckling because what happens when you when you squish and you white knuckle something and then all of a sudden you open your hands up and you open your fingers up. It feels good. Right. It's like a huge like. Mm-hmm. you know, release. And when I had that profound session, I looked at myself in the mirror for the first time. And it was like, I was seeing myself for the first time without all that crap all over me. And I almost couldn't recognize myself. I was like, who is that person in the mirror? And I was like that. I felt like I was staring through a Halloween mask. Like I was like looking at myself going, I don't know you. And I never did. I never knew that side of me. So it's really interesting and letting go or moving forward, transforming is there's no other way you have to, you have to, I'm going to say involve because evolution, there's an evolution and there's an involution, right? So you really do need to involve, like you have to change from the inside. And if you don't, and I'm going to say it like this, we evolve or we die. You know, it's, we involve or we die. right? And I don't mean that in a very literal sense, but we feel like we do because we just don't move anywhere. We're stuck in the same spot and your life is not meant to be that. Yeah. You just can't see beyond that sometimes. Right. Yeah, definitely. I think I, I really noticed that when, when my dad passed away and when my grandmother passed away, because they both got to these points where they just, just they didn't really want to learn anything. They didn't really, they were like, I'm done learning. I'm done meeting new people. And they, they, they both came, came to this situation. It was really strange for me to observe it. But I think that is, that was a lesson that I had to learn, right? That if you're not, if you're not going forward, that's it. It's just going to fizzle out and it's not going to carry forward. That's it. We're here to learn until the day that we die. I mean, that is it, right? And we're never dead. Like, you know, it's just the body that's gone. And I always think of my body like, you know, what am I wearing today? <laughs> you know, it's just, what, what outfit have I got on today? And so, you know, if you understand that we are so much more than this, we are so much more than this, right? So look for holistic help. Look for a holistic because I have, a, I have an issue with people calling themselves healers. I've said this many times and it's because someone like me or like you, we're not the healer unless we're the one who's being healed. Mm -hmm. Because it's the healer is the person being healed. It's the person who's growing. It's the person who's on their journey. It's not the person who's facilitating it. Right. So it's you. If you're going to get help, if you are, you know, working on being better and stepping into your mastery, then you're the healer. Because without you, it's not happening. Yeah, when people are open and they decided that they're like, okay, I want to move forward, I want to get over this issue, um, it's really easy. (laughs) It's really easy to help someone who comes to me and says, please help me with X, Y, Z. I've had situations where people have told me, uh, you know, about horrific abuse that they've suffered. And at the end, they're laughing about it. But that was because they were so ready to get over it that they were willing to open their mind and see it from a different perspective. And then when there's people that are just not ready, 
it doesn't matter how, you know, if you are the best, <laughs> the best at what you do, if someone is not ready, it's never going to work. It's never going to happen. Exactly. You're right. And that's why I say the people are the healers. So yeah, I, I was, at, I don't know, since the beginning, I think of them, me working with this work, someone said to me, you're a healer. And I said, no, not unless I'm taking a session, like unless someone's working on me. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, so we have a lot of power within us. So step into it. So if I'm going to ask you one last question, Maria, if what's your favorite tip or strategy to share with people? So I think the number one thing, and this is one of my kind of biggest values is compassion. And I think that we, when we want to change, we kind of get stuck in the masculine energy and we think that we have to force changes in ourselves and kind of push ourselves and discipline ourselves. And, you know, there's an element of discipline and stuff involved, but I think that, um, you know, you can only change, like you can only make true sustainable change in your life from a place of self-love and self-compassion. And any change that's not made from that energy will not be sustainable, will not be long lasting and will not ultimately benefit you. So whatever you do, make sure that you're doing it from compassion and from self-love. Great message. Love it. Thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you all for listening and just being you. So mad love to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And Maria. Thank you thank so you. much for having me. Yeah. And you've now become a new teacher in iAwesome, which is amazing. And uh, thank you for, for joining the Academy. So thank you all for listening. And we'll talk to you again soon.